Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. We're going to be speaking with Liz Hormans in this segment. She's CEO of Lyle Immunopharma. She's joining us on the program to talk about how the company's tackling one of the hottest topics in cancer treatment, and that is how to deploy cell therapy techniques to improve outcomes for patients with solid tumor cancers. Welcome to Health Professional Radio. Liz Hormans, thank you for taking the time. Thank you for having me, Neil. Give our listeners a bit of your professional background and talk briefly about Lyle Immunopharma and the work you're doing there on onco- in oncology. Lyle has a really interesting approach to developing cures for solid tumor cancers using living cells. So when we were first founded, we approached the problem by identifying the two most important barriers to developing successful therapies, the, essentially the apical barriers. And we think those are T-cell exhaustion, which is a dysfunctional state that T-cells enter into when they encounter the solid tumor microenvironment, and a lack of durable stemness. And a lack of durable stemness simply means that the T-cells don't have the ability to self-renew, you know, essentially repopulate the population, and they also can't generate daughter cells that differentiate into effector cells that can kill the cancer. And so we believe T-cells need to have the ability to resist exhaustion, and they need to have durable stemness if they're going to be able to eradicate the cancer. Those are what we think the two most important barriers are. And then for the last three and a half years, we've we've spent our time developing two technologies to address each one of those barriers. The first barrier, uh, the first technology is GenR. This is a a genetic reprogramming technology based on work completed by Crystal Makel, one of our founders from Stanford University. And what Crystal discovered was that in exhausted T cells, there's an imbalance in the AP1 family of transcription factors. And if you correct for that imbalance, you can endow T cells with the ability to resist exhaustion. So we have a technology that can do exactly that, and that's called GenR for genetic reprogramming. Now, our second technology platform is EPIR, and that's short for epigenetic reprogramming. And this is based on work completed by Nick Westifo at the NCI. And what Nick was doing there is essentially metabolically stressing cells. So essentially, he's starving the cells to force an epigenetic change in, uh, in, the, in the T cell population. Um, and what he found was that he could create much more potent T cells. Now, it takes a lot more than um, to, what, what we discovered at Lyle is that it takes more than just the, the high potassium media to create an effective T cell therapy. So we've developed specialized media activation, you know, special, customized activation and expansion protocols, customized cytokines, an entire protocol that allows us to intentionally and reliably create a population of cells that has this durable stem-like quality so they can self-renew and generate daughter cells that kill the cancer. So we identified the two most important barriers, T cell exhaustion and a lack of durable stemness. And now we've developed technologies that address those barriers and we're ready to move those technologies into the clinic in three different cell therapy modalities, CAR-T, TIL, and PCR. Are you the only people in this space that are actually identifying these barriers? Is that the main thing that differentiates you from competitors? Well, we haven't seen others take this approach, Mm -hmm. Um, and maybe I'll expand a little bit more on how how the approach manifests in our pipeline. So we'll evaluate both of these technologies in combination with a a CAR T cell, a ROR1 targeted CAR T cell. And then we'll, uh, so, and and we'll also evaluate the FER technology in combination with TIL. And we have a partnership with GSK where we combine, where they're looking at uh, the NYU so targeted TCR in combination with GenR and then separately with FER. And we're doing this, we, we don't have 15 different targets that we're pursuing, which is an approach, you know, many companies are, are much more interested in the target and identifying, you know, what's the right target to go after. But at Lyle, we really think it's about getting the cells right. So we want to make sure that we have highly functional, highly potent, highly effective cells. And we can do that in in uh, in these different in in our car program and in the till program and in the in the in the TCR program, um, and these are essentially vehicles for us to test our technologies across the different modalities. And if we are successful, Neil, you know, then that's the point where we can start to expand into additional targets. That's the moment when we would start, you know, introducing additional targets from our pipeline into the clinic. 
But we don't see the point in doing that until we've actually established that the cells are functional and essentially good at, at killing the cancer. And so we think that approach, um, you know, A, identifying T cell exhaustion and, and the lack of and, and, and durable stemness, lack of durable stemness is problems, but also our approach to really getting the cells right and understanding the science behind why those cells are working and if they're not working, why they're not working. Um, and we think that's we think that, in addition to our technologies, is highly differentiating. As you become a clinical stage company, what would you say that uh, Lyle's top priorities are this year? Well, what a, what a great question. We have recently cleared our first IMB for our ROAR1 CAR-T program, combining and incorporating GenR and FER, and we'll start screening uh, patients for that trial at the end of the first quarter, um, which means we will start enrolling patients soon thereafter. We would anticipate having a, a meaningful data, data set for that study uh, sometime in 2023. And when I say meaningful, uh, what, what we really want to convey is that we want to have a really good understanding of how the cells are performing in patients, both in the regressors and uh, and if we have patients who progress, you know, what's happening there. And that's important to us because we have other technologies in our research pipeline that are combinable and stackable and we could layer those in to the, the next IND or perhaps a child IND in the same study to address the next resistance resistance mechanism that the tumor might have in store for, uh, for our CAR-T cells. So really important is that um, when we see the data for this first trial, that we really understand it and we know what's going on with, with the cells and we want to be able to tell that full story. So that's why we think that'll be in 2023. Um, we also have a second wholly owned, owned program at Lyle, which is a trial evaluating till tumor infiltrating lymphocytes in combination with our FER technology. And that IND is on track uh, for submission in the second half of this year. And we're really excited about that program, not only because of the, the durable stemness quality that, that uh, FER allows us to create in the till population, but also because the FER common technology in combination with till um, preserves the polyclinality of the till population. And we think that is a highly differentiating and really important aspect of our therapy. Uh, we believe that it's going to provide a step change in efficacy for patients. Um, with this modality. So we're we're eager and excited to start that clinical study. Well, give us a website where we can learn more, if you would. Uh, we are Lyle.com. And that is L-Y-E-L-L.com, correct? Yes, that's right. right. Great. Well, I appreciate you joining us here on Health Professional Radio this evening. Thank you so much for taking the time out. Thanks so much, Neil. It's been fun. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, with Liz Hellmans. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.